Hello everyone and welcome to John's Corner. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys a game that you guys might not know but we can learn to play and make at home called Santorini. So one of the nice things about this game is that it's uh, in between difficulty between chess and checkers. So most kids can play it. The box is eight up but the community at Board Game Geek, which is a great board game resource, says that it's about for ages six and up, which means that it should meet the requirements for everyone here at after school. It's a really fun game. It's fairly easy to learn. But there's a lot of strategy to it, so let's jump in. The Beginning of Santorini Deep in the heart of the Aegean Sea, a long time ago before you and me, when the gods of the Pantheon did not yet have fame, they met in the ocean and invented the game. Atop Mount Olympus who sat on his throne, and none of his children would leave him alone. So he commanded the teens with a thunderous tone, all immortal kids go outside and leave me alone. But Zeus was unaware of what he implored, as mischievous is the product of a god who is bored. Ares soon wanted humans to regard him as lord, and he sent Spartan and Trojans to die by the sword. Until on the horizon he eventually spied an extremely tall island that was not very wide. Some pathetic humans are building a village. What a great opportunity to go over and pillage. But Aphrodite stopped him and decided to ask, Why do you always make destruction your task? Instead, let us help them build this wonderful city. Destroying those domes would be a terrible pity. You guide them your way, I'll guide them mine, so we can both help them finish these temples divine. And when one of our towers rises above all the rest, we shall see who can help these humans build them the best. So they constructed quite quickly, using builders to claim the highest point on the island for their own godly name. Each of the gods had their own special powers they used to advantage while erecting their towers. Upon realizing an opponent's moves could be predicted, these gods couldn't help it. They were completely addicted. Ares said, what fun, let us give this a name. Zeus spoke from above, we shall call it a game. So they built Santorini again and again by shaping the thoughts of those women and men. And each time they built it, it was never the same, though Ares had to smash it between every game. Zeus rarely saw the kids for the rest of that summer. They no longer stared at the walls, just getting dumber. So next time you wonder which game came before all, remember the island of Santorini, not too wide, but quite tall. To play the game, the game comes with two workers for each team, and then a set of little structures that you can then use to build the game. On the first level, we build the first bottom piece of the tower. When we try to build again, more on this later, the second piece goes up, and now it's a two-floor tower. When we build on it again, a third piece is going to go up, and now it's a third-floor tower. And if we try to build again, we'll put a little dome on it, and now the tower has been fully completed. So the game is played on a board that is five tall and five wide, and each team is going to get two workers. At the start of your game, the first player places his, and the second player then chooses to place both of theirs. So the bases of the game are fairly simple. On your turn, you're going to choose one of your workers, and you can move them to one of the eight spaces that's adjacent to them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. For instance, let's say the blue player system was going first, and they moved here. After you do your move, you are then allowed to build on one of the spaces that's uh, adjacent to you again. There are normally eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. However, you cannot build underneath another worker. So in this example, they could build on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. The first time you build, you're going to put down the third level block. Now on the next turn, we can have the brown player go, so I can show a little bit more. They can go on one of their 8 spaces next to them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. However, there's a rule you can only ever go up one floor. So here I could go down one, and I can build again on the adjacent spaces. There's nothing adjacent on the bottom, so I could build on one, two, three, four, or five. Let's say I want to build here. And using what we just told, because this blue player can only go up one level, he cannot go up this building. But if there was another building right here, 
you could go up one level and still choose to build an adjacent spot. The point of the game is to try and get yourself to the top of a third floor building. So you need to go up one space, two, and three. And if you make it all the way to the third one, you win. However, if someone ever builds a fourth level to the building, a dome, you can now see the person cannot stand on it anymore, so their space is no longer eligible to be moved on to. The last two important rules are that when moving, you can go down any number of spaces you want. And the last important rule is if you can never move or build, you lose the game. So here in this example, you can see for the brown team, they can only ever go up one floor, but these are all more than two. There's no empty spaces, so they cannot move. So in this example, the blue team would win. And here is an example of a finished game. We're going to be playing through it later in a bit, but I wanted to show you how the game board would look. And if you notice, the brown player here has gone to the third floor of a tower, so they won the game. So here's a game that I played with my friend via text. Moving diagonally. Building somewhere next to me. Then the blue player is going to move. And the blue player is going to build adjacent to them. The brown player is going to move. And the brown player is going to build on the second floor. The blue player is going to move. And the blue player is going to move adjacent to them. The brown player is going to go next. They're going to build. And as we talked about before, because these are too high, you can only go up one level, the blue player can now not climb either of those buildings. The blue player is going to move up one square, and they're going to build next to them. The brown player is going to move up one level because they can, and then they're going to build on the second floor next to them. The blue player, because they can't climb up any of the buildings, can move down a square. And they're going to build right where they were before. The brown player is going to move up one floor. And they're going to build on the square that they were, because it's still adjacent to them. The blue player is going to move back up one floor. And they're going to build adjacent to them. The brown player, because they can't go up any levels, are going to move over one. They're going to build the third floor on a building to try and win. The blue player to stop them is going to move their piece diagonally, building on the building adjacent to them, putting a dome on it, and now this worker can't climb on top, and so they cannot win yet. The brown player is going to move over one space and build up a tower. The blue player is going to move diagonally, build adjacent, the brown player is going to move diagonally and build a dome. The blue player is going to move over and build where they were standing. The brown player is going to jump down and they're going to build on top of that building. The blue player is going to move down, and they're going to add a third floor to a building. The brown player is going to go up to the corner and build in the corner. The blue player is going to move down diagonally, and they're going to build onto the building right there. The brown player is going to go back to the spot where they were and is going to build on the square here. The blue player moves over one and they are going to build on the square where the brown player just built. The brown player is going to move back to the square where they just were 
and they're going to build where they just were. And the blue player is going to move over, and they're also going to build where they just were. The brown player is going to go back to the spot where they were, and they're going to build where they were standing. The blue player is going to climb up a level, and he's going to build in front of him. The brown player is going to move diagonally, and they're going to build. And now this is where I borrow a term from chess, is in checkmate, where no matter what your opponent does, you are still going to win. The blue player moves over. They're going to try and stop the brown player by building a dome here. But on the brown player's turn, they're going to move up. Finally, on the third floor of a building, and the brown player has won. So while that was how to play the base game, if you remember from the story, it talks about having special powers. If you have played a few games and you really enjoy it, and you want to make it a little more difficult or challenging, you can add powers. Each player would get one. Here's two of the more it's, uh, basic ones. We have Demeter, and these can all mainly be found online. Demeter, after moving, can build once, and then build a second time on a different square, but there can't be any people on them. And then the other player could do Hermes. As long as you don't move up or down, both of your workers can move as many spaces as they want, and then one of them can build. Having seen the game, what would we need to do to build our own? I'm going to be using poster board to make my board. I'm going to need something stackable. If you have them at home, you could use Legos. I don't, so i got some paper cups that I can use to build on. I also have some note cards to help them be a little bit more stackable. And then we can have any figures that we want from home. We can go out and find some rocks. You can, if you're using Legos, you can use Lego people. I have some little figures of my own. So I'm going to use those. So that I can decorate my poster board now to make it into my 5x5 five five board. I have my cups that can be my first level of a building. Using my note cards, I can put them on top when I'm trying to build an extra level. And I can also use my note cards when I'm trying to put a dome on top of a building. Tip it a little top, and my little figures fit right on top. So I'll be back in a second showing my board that I've made. And feel free to post pictures of the boards that you guys have made. Here's a comparison with the board that I made and the board that we just played. Here we can see we've got our nice little towers all built with our people climbing up to the third floor. One thing I would do, I just use a straight edge to make the lines on my board. Although I should have pre-measured a little bit, but it uh, still works fine. And that is uh, how you make Santorini at home. And I hope you guys had as much fun, and will have as much fun, as playing Santorini as I did with my friend. That's the basic of the game. Although, one secret. I did hide one move in the game that one of the players could have done to get into checkmate much earlier. If anyone can send me that message, I'll challenge you to a game myself. And while I wanted to teach you guys a new game, before I send you off, I thought we could also go over some other things we could do with the materials that we have. I, for instance, instead of having a 5x5 board, made a much larger board. And using my cups, I can use my board. I do know that I have a little green dot in the center. I can play with my cups. I can put circles and X's. And I can play tic-tac-toe. Instead, if you have a larger poster board, you could use two make a larger board and you can make your own chess pieces or use them as checker pieces. And another great example is if you know the game of Mancala. Mancala is a fairly easy game to do. This would be the board, but we can set up imagining these little uh, parts here to have them you be the actual cups. And you play with using little stones like this. I happen to have some stones myself, but you can go out and use pretty much anything. You can find rocks that you found outside and play some more games that you guys have done, or you can create your own. And if you do create your own, share them with us so we can play them too.